All right. And we're going to start. Oh, wait. We're starting this morning in Sleeping Lizard. So, Sleeping Lizard. Mm -hmm. You're going to lie on your belly and you're going to take your right knee. You're going to bend it so it comes straight out from your hip and your right arm and you're looking to the right. So it's a very, like it's a very low impact posture. Let your body drop towards the ground. Morning. And for those of you just, you wanna feel your body actually relax into pose. So we're starting Layla in Sleeping Lizard. And it's, you lie on your belly and then, what? That's another dog, dude. Okay, you lie on your belly and then you bend your right knee, have your knee coming straight out from your hip and your elbow bent. So did you hear that too, Johan? Perhaps, yes. Okay, cool. Perfect, yes. Take a full breath in and with your exhale, just sigh out. <sighs> Feel the ground support you. Maybe take a couple of uh, breaths and really notice the room that you're in, the temperature in the room the different noises around you. And then allow that observation to turn inward. Sometimes it's useful just to notice where your attention has been spending the most time today. Acknowledge it. And then really move through your body systematically, body and being. Noticing first, maybe a wish or intention or a dream. Observing your thinking. Noticing your feelings. And then gently move yourself to the other side of sleeping lizard. So bring your left knee up, your left elbow bends. I forgot. Your right ears on the ground. And let's, let's read one of my favorite poems from Langston Hughes. The Negro speaks of rivers. I've known rivers. 
I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. This poem is from nearly a hundred years ago. He wrote it um, and was really active in what sometimes is referred to as the Harlem Renaissance. And the wisdom in this poem is so layered and rich. Speaking to flows that are beyond our ken, beyond our understanding really. And then slide your left leg long. And just as that transition, push your hands underneath your shoulders and push your hips back to your heels, come into child's pose. You can take a full languid breath here, nice and slow and unrushed. And we're next gonna make our way into frog. So we're doing a reptile morning from lizards to frogs. So lift up your chest and line up them yourself like you want. So maybe you turn so that you can keep your knees on your yoga mat and you can even take blankets or fold your yoga mat in so you can get extra padding underneath your knees. And then slide your knees out as wide as they go lining up your hips and your knees. <laughs> and you might just take a couple moments and notice like, love it, hate it, then move on. Here, I'm gonna bring you some things to make things better, however you wanna use them. Um, and the, big, the biggest feedback, so classically frog pose, you have your hips lined up with your knees and then you have your ankles directly underneath your knees, just like Pear does with your feet flexed. So then you look like a frog. You can rest on your elbows or some people can actually rest on their chest. And unfortunately the feedback that you're doing it absolutely perfectly is that on every exhale, it gets a little bit more intense. Yeah. This poem by Langston Hughes, it speaks of multiple times of being alive at different times along different rivers. And it speaks of this deepening effect of our soul. very similar to the way, you know, it's the flow of a river through a valley 
that actually carves its path. And as the water flows, it continues to carve a little deeper and move a little further into the ground. Diane McCabe, who is um, a Lakota elder, I believe. Lakota, yeah. She has this wonderful small video about water and talking to water and really remembering that the water on this earth has been the water on this earth. That it may move and change and move from being in the river to being up in the clouds and raining back down onto the earth. But the actual water of this earth has, is the same water. And that in a lot of Native American cosmologies, they talk about how the water is what communicates, for instance, in the land, the water from the mountains communicates how things are in the mountains to the water in the sea by the rivers traveling. And part of the protest against damming rivers is because it interrupts this ancient communication that happens between land and sea. And there's countless stories of water containing memory. And this picture of in a glass of water or in any water, there is waters from every time and everywhere. So when Langston Hughes talks about being at the Euphrates or the, on the Congo or the Nile or the Mississippi, he gives them historically different times when the pyramids are being built or when Abraham Lincoln goes down to the Mississippi. There's also this intuitive knowing, I didn't forget about you. There's this intuitive knowing that the waters too carry that memory. Take 10 more full, fat, unhurried breaths. And remember, or not. <laughs> And after your 10th breath, slide forward, moan and groan, whatever you need to do. Notice the feelings will actually move more through you as you move your body and you breathe. And you can even make some dramatic sounding to help the feelings and sensations move through you. Coming out of the pose. Mm -hmm. That's usually what I want to do after I come out of that pose mm, or while I'm in that pose, but I've told you already, I'm a moaner. All right, find your way into Sphinx. I mean, we were just at, you know, the pyramids. <laughs> so one of the gifts of our time, how I imagine it, 
and how I've heard some other elders talk about it is there's two very specific things. One is ever since like the mid nineties or so, there's been this kind of um, cosmic mandate to open up the mysteries. <clears throat> so there, there are disparate, like separate tribes and peoples whose elders have been given the task to move from where they are to go teach in the West. There are, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of fascinating to hear these, these very separate places and separate cosmologies being all of a sudden opened up for everyone who's asking or wanting to know to discover. I mean, there's even, it's not just tribal indigenous people. There's also, you know, there's been, there's different, and this is continuous, but there's, you know, different um, gospels have been found um, connected to uh, Judeo-Christian cosmology. Um, but there's this very, you know, even in mystery schools, and um, kind of uh, paths of monks, there's been new things have been found and brought to light and being showed. And there's also this, um, This idea, very similar, very much to how Langston Hughes puts it, that as humanity, we are actually ripe for peace in a way that we have never been because of the repeated lives of people and the tragedy and publicity of wars, that we've actually crossed a threshold where you know war doesn't make sense to the layman to the general public anymore for instance i was talking in i was talking with a good friend of mine in california in the us and she was saying that none of the us news channels have said about have really talked about biden bombing syria so so there's there's this change of attitude around war that isn't good for business as usual. But the difference of, of like World War I or World War II was that there was actually like, it, it was totally on the, on the other way where it's like the government said this and all the people were like, yeah, let's go behind it and, and rally towards it. to see that within a hundred years about that has changed to governments not even being, you know, open about being at war or acts of war only points to that ripeness that humans have for peace. And this is, you know, this is where the paradigm shift comes from. It doesn't come from out there. No government proclaims like now is the time, but instead it is this effect of our inner lives being so that you can't ignore your inner life anymore. And so you have to bring it out and manifest it into your life, into the outside. That's how the spiritual revolution of the 60s worked. There was no, you know, the revolution won't be televised. There was no mandate like now is the time for co-creation and now is the time to do something different than your parents did. Now is the time to grow your hair long and change the rules. That all came from this courage to notice what was alive on the inside 
in this inner private life that each individual has and then bring it out and allow it to become a part of the culture. So you can either stay here or you can extend your arms for, the, for a minute more in this back bend, coming into seal. And it's always very useful to notice just what your habit is. Are you always pushing too hard? And you maybe in your yoga practice, you'll ask, be asked internally to kind of back off sometimes or vice versa. Maybe you really like to stay comfortable. <laughs> I don't, it, people really are like that. There's different, different folk. <laughs> This is one of the, the beautiful truths about, you know, be yourself as an act of revolution, because being yourself, you, you have to find, you know, these kind of currents of the rivers and express them in just this one way that you get to express them. It's no accident that you are here now. And then slowly lower yourself down to the mat, wiggle, groan, moan. And so as Ananda says, <laughs> Our practice in yoga is a practice of self-realization. So bring your hands underneath your shoulders and push your hips back to your heels. And you know how languages evolves and changes with us. We're not just realizing our wants and desires, but much more our higher self. And then when you're ready, roll up and come into a seated position. What was this foot? And bring your hands to heart center. I always like to kind of rub my hands a little bit because that makes my palms warm. And then you push your palms together and bring that warmth to your heart. <laughs> Let your elbows drop. Find the length in, in your spine. With your eyes closed, you can even imagine you have some celestial little beings lifting up the tips of your ears. And just take a moment and dedicate your practice to a person or even a place in your life where you want to invite more peace. And let's sound three ohms. Take a deep inhale. Ah. And then allow your hands to relax down by your side and you're gonna roll forward and you're gonna come and bring your elbows onto the ground and you're gonna interlace your fingers. So what you're doing is you're creating a triangular base. So you might have to fix your hair so that the very top of your head can come down onto the ground. So you're gonna put your head, the top of your head, that, so that place that was soft when you were born, the very apex, you're gonna put that on the ground and your wrists are gonna be cradling the back of your head. 
And then you're going to tuck your toes under and extend your legs. Now this might be as far as you go. Try to really have your grip so that your the base of your palms are coming more together. And so like sometimes we do this headstand with an open grip and it's not a stable foundation because it, it doesn't allow us to keep the triangle. So keep that grip in your hands, keep your elbows underneath your shoulders. So you on maybe squeeze your elbows closer together. And then with your eyes, find a line that moves up and down and notice that that line should feel proper, should feel real aligned, like perpendicular in your chest. And then if you're ready, start to walk your feet towards your face. And when your hips come over your shoulders, you will feel a sensation as if your legs have lost weight and they can float up to the sky like balloons. Now, here's one of the troubles. If you don't yet have your hips over your shoulders, the temptation will be to fake it and to jump. Once you're in your headstand, really think about your uprightness, imagining that you're standing on the ceiling. And don't worry, even working towards headstand already starts to bring you the benefits of headstands. So there's no rush. And then find your way back down to child's pose. Let your body recover. Notice what you're doing mentally, success or failure, maybe help yourself, let it go. And then one more time, slide your elbows forward, but we're gonna this time come into dolphin pose. So for this variation, have your hands reaching straight out from your elbows, come up onto your knees and your elbows. And then tuck your toes under and lift your hips up. And you want to make sure that you have enough room to nod your head yes and shake your head no without your head hitting the ground. If you need to, <clears throat> Johan, squeeze your elbows closer together. Yes, there you go. Beautiful. Now, this might be plenty for you. Or you maybe want a little bit more so you can tiptoe your feet a little closer to your face and lift up one leg. Try to have a nice steady breath through your nose. Of course, you're welcome to have a little jumpy poo, but yogi's cho choice. And then switch whichever leg is straight up. And when you're landing, you want to land as quietly as a mouse. <laughs> so breathe into it. Remember, there's no place to go. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Notice if your elbows slid out again, squeeze them back in. And then everybody meet back up in child's pose. So a lot of times when we try something new or challenging, like either you hold your breath or you're just panting through your mouth like a dog or, you know, all of the discipline about how you are in the class that goes, Bleep. so bring it back in, allow your attention return, allow your breath to become even, breathing through your nose. And then stretch your arms forward, tuck your toes under, and lift up into downward facing dog. And you should feel that it feels really spacious. It's like you graduated from being a dock sound to being like a great Dane or something. <laughs> Maybe make some moves, bending one knee at a time. Feel your hips reaching up and back. Trying to lengthen your spine. Take another full fueling inhale. And with your exhale, 
look forward, bend your knees, lift up your heels. And then while you're holding your breath, jump your feet quietly in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release and bow down. Let your head drop. Push down with your feet, roll up to the sky, stretch up tall. And with your exhale, samasti tihi, bringing your hands through heart center and that end of your breath, releasing them down. Inhale, stretch your arms up to the sky. Lift your gaze. Exhale, bow forward. So your head drops, but you actually, again, lift your gaze, but this time to your belly button. Inhale, halfway lift, keeping your chin away from your chest. And then step back to plank. And let's breathe here. Feel your fingers spread out. Feel your heels reaching back. Feel that you're lifting up in between your shoulder blades. And feel the alignment of the little vertebrae of your neck even lining up with your spine. Now inch forward to your tippy toes and touching through Chataranga, come all the way down to the ground. Flip your toes over, plant your toenails into the ground. Feel this is the root of your pose and then inhale, lift up low cobra. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Find the weight evenly distributed between your hands and your feet. For most of us, that just means that we have to bend our knees and bring more weight into our legs. Take another fueling inhale, empty your breath all the way, and then walk or float your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, drag your chest forward, broad open chest. Exhale, release and bow down, let your head drop. Root down to rise up, lift up tall. And exhale, samasti tihi. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift, feel your abdominals engage. And then step back to plank. Let's take a couple breaths here. Rachel, yeah, I know. Just slow it down a little bit. Find your power. It's right there. And then with your next inhale, inch forward to your tippy toes, this time lower down, just chaturanga, keep your chin away from your chest, Hedwig. And then inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra, beautiful. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let your knees be bent. Maybe start to find that your breath is finding a rhythm. Notice what your emotions are. Notice what you're doing mentally. Are you being like your own cheerleader? Are you like talking shit? I know, I mean, fertilizer. <laughs> but just start to notice because we have such a tendency to get used to how we talk to ourselves that sometimes we forget to notice that we could say something different. Empty your breath all the way with your next exhale. Look forward and lightly and quietly jump your feet in between your hands. Inhale, halfway lift, broaden your whole chest. Exhale, release and bow down. Let your head drop. Push down with your feet, roll up, stretch up tall. And this time, catch your right wrist. And with your next inhale, lift up even higher and then bow to your left. Let your hips slide to your right, your chest open. We're gonna take a couple breaths here. So you wanna feel that you're still reaching down with your heels as you lift up with your knuckles. So you're giving yourself traction, elongating your whole body, even in this bend. And then with your next inhale, lift up to center, switch your grip, grab onto your left wrist, slide your left, your hips to the left, and without losing heart, keep your gaze forward. Feel that you're stretching in two directions and this dyna dynamic movement actually fills you with light instead of exhausting you. And then inhale, lift back up to center. And this time, hook onto your thumbs. 
lift up even higher, creating space between your ribs and your hips. Let your hips slide slightly, slightly forward and come into a little back bend here. But you don't get shorter. It's like you're arching over a big, big fat barrel. Then inhale, lift up high, reach up. And with your exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float. Exhale, chataranga. Does not feel good. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your right leg up to the sky. With your exhale, bend your knee and let your hips spin open. Take a full inhale here, both your hands pushing down and forward. And with your next exhale, tap your left elbow with your right knee. Inhale, stretch your leg long. And with your exhale, step your right foot all the way forward to your right foot hand, and then wave your right arm up, twisting lizard. Uh -huh. And then with your next inhale, stretch up, crescent lunge. Exhale, sweet chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg back, noticing we're working on expansion. And then bend your knee and let your hips spin open, but you're not losing length in your torso. Take another inhale here. Exhale and bring your left knee to your right elbow. Inhale, stretch your leg gloriously long and then step your foot all the way to your left thumb and then lift your left arm, waving up, coming into twisted lizard and then lift up crescent lunge with your inhale. It's a different strength. Exhale, sweet chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or a low cobra. Yo, exhale, downward facing dog. Let your knees bend so that your hips can pull up and back. Eventually, not when we first start practicing, but eventually we really can find that our downward facing dog is a resting pose. Take another full, inspiring and fueling inhale. Empty your breath all the way. Look forward and lightly hop your feet in between your hands. Inhale, glide your chest forward. Exhale, release and bow down. Bend your knees, drop your hips. Inhale, one breath. Ukatasana, go low. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Walk or float. Exhale, sweet chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, extend your right leg up to the sky. With your exhale, bend your knee and let your hips spin open. Inhale, being active in the pose here. And with your exhale, tap your left elbow with your right knee. Inhale, stretch long. With your exhale, step your right foot to your right thumb and then wave your right arm up, twisting your lizard, and then lift up into crescent lunge. And with your exhale, open up warrior two. And let's breathe here and rest in this active hip opener pose. So you wanna pull your body to your center line. So you tuck your fabulous booty underneath you to support you. You wanna bravely lunge so that your right knee is over your right ankle. And Layla, instead of thinking of like holding your arms up, think about reaching them long. I, I promise it's actually easier. So we wanna feel that creativity is enlivening where often obedience can be draining or obedience where your heart isn't in it. Like be obedient to God and the laws of the universe, to your love. Notice if you've got flames popping out of your thigh. <laughs> Notice what your mouth is doing. Take another full inhale, you're awesome. And with your exhale, sweet chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stretch your left leg up to the sky. With your exhale, bend your knee, let your hips spin open. With your inhale, feel the action here, the activity. So your left hip is stacked over your right hip. With your next exhale, bring your left knee to your right elbow. Inhale, stretch your leg long. Exhale, step your left foot to your left thumb. Lift up your left arm, twist your lizard, other left arm. And then inhale, lift up to crescent lunge. Exhale, open up, warrior two. Now there's this horrible problem with warrior two. So tuck your booty first, if your name's Frida, thanks love. Um, where we think, okay, I wanna be kind to myself. I'm gonna back off a little bit and try to make it easier for myself because she made us hold this for a really long time. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. The alignment of reaching your left knee over your left ankle and then stacking your vertebrae in one line is that the alignment empowers you and helps you. If you back off a little bit from that perfect geometry, one can say, it becomes a lot harder to stay in the pose. So really actively imagine your, your fingernails are sick of each other on the left hand and the right hand, and you're trying to reach them away from one another. Can you be peaceful here? Yeah, peaceful warrior, we'll get there. Notice the fire. Where can you on purpose slow down your breath to slow your heartbeat? And then with your inhale, fuel up. And with your exhale, flow. Sweet chataranga. Inhale, upward facing dog or low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. That totally happens to me sometimes. Where you're like, you're going for up dog, but then all of a sudden the floor is there. <laughs> and then walk your feet about hip distance or a little bit wider and walk your hands back to your feet. Before we take a grip here, just wrap your thumbs with your fingers and just make some twisties with your wrists. Bending your knees as much as you need to. Shake out your hands and then slide your hands underneath your feet so that your big toes or <laughs> all of your toes, the perfectly sized toes that you have are nestled and cuddling into the creases of your wrist. Now, if this is easy peasy for you, you can work on the balance here and start to let the weight come to your toes and eventually even lift up your heels. Let your head go, honey. Yeah. Gorgeous. And then step off of your hands and root down and roll up. Maybe you need a little shake. It can be re-energizing, resets your nervous system. And then with your um, exhale, you're gonna bring your right ankle to the outside of your left knee. Mm -hmm. Bend your left knee, it makes it a little easier, Nola. Now everybody bring your hands to heart center and bend your left knee. So this might be as far as you go, or maybe you have a little bit more in there and you can bring your hands down to the ground and drop your head. Sabine, I feel like you can bring your foot so that ankle, the bony part of your ankle, exactly, you know. <laughs> and for today this is just as far as we're going to take it now bring your hands back to center rise up and let your right foot come down maybe do a little dance oh yeah baby uh -huh. <laughs> other side is going to be awesome all right so you're gonna already put a small bend in your knee. I didn't say that so clearly, but it makes it much, much, much easier to bring your left ankle on top of your knee. So you want the bony part of your ankle to the outside of your right knee. 
and then bring your hands to heart center and just sit your hips down. So you probably already feel like one of those awesome like Shiva statues or something. So feel, feel your divine nature and then release your hands down. If that's there for you or just hang out here. I know that's plenty of work. If your hands are touching the ground, see if you can drop your head. And then inhale, rise back up, place your left leg down, shake it out. Inhale, stretch your arms up high with your exhale, bow forward and walk your hands forward to plank. And then step your feet together and roll to your left, stretching your right arm to the sky. So you're on the outside of your left foot. Now you can either put your foot behind, uh, if you need more balance help, you can put your top foot behind the bottom foot for a little kickstand to help you balance better. Or you can even bring your bottom knee to the ground. Shaking's totally okay. And then with your exhale, find plank again, take a nice full fueling inhale. And with your next exhale, roll over to the other side. So the alignment here should be um, just like you're standing, but you have your arms stretched out. Now, if it's there for you smoothly, bring your left elbow down to the ground. And then you're, you can roll to the left and come into baby Vasustasana. So you're doing the same posture, but, but on your elbow. And because it's called baby, we somehow think it's easier, but I don't know if you guys have noticed, but babies are a lot of work. <laughs> okay, come and bring your right elbow down. And then the other side, we're nearly there. You're doing great. Now still see if you can find the alignment in your spine. Are you jacking your hips up too high? Are they sinking too low? Are you getting mad? Remember, you're still a peacemaker. Oh yeah, <laughs> it gets harder, doesn't it? And then bring your left elbow down to the ground and let's hold this for a moment. Let the fire really reach its peak. So feel your belly lifting, feel that you're lifted up in between your shoulder blades, your heels are reaching back. You're amazing. So I, peace work is harder than fighting. We have eons of practice at fighting. And then slowly lower yourself down to the ground. <sighs> Take your, your gaze one side or the other, just a subtle twist in your neck. And then lift up your head and turn your face the other way. And then we're gonna come up into Sphinx. And I want you to fold your left arm in and you're gonna reach back and see if you can hold on to your right heel. So you're, you're in a supported back bend and you're pulling your right heel to your buttocks. So first you pull, you might then be able to twist your hand and push. So your fingers and your toes are going the same way. You wanna stay as much squared forward as you can. So both your hips are still on the ground. Mm-hmm. Just casually hanging out here. And then switch. So it also, if it's not available for your hand to really pull your foot, you can always put your foot into your elbow and maybe you spin your hand around so your toes and your fingers point the same way and you're pushing down. There's people that can even kind of pop their toes in front of their ribs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got a sailor in the room this morning. <laughs> I don't know how sensitive my microphone is. 
No, a farmer. It makes a lot of sense. She's talking about fertilizer a lot. <laughs> And then release and then bring your hands where your elbows were and stretch up and we're coming into cobra so often we don't do this pose so cobra you want your legs active your toenails are pushing down your knees are lifting up you can maybe even walk your hands closer maybe and then just for fun if you'd like bend your knees and see if you can reach your head back to your feet Florian's thinking, yes, this is my pose. <laughs> Beautiful. There's actually this really awesome thing where the arches of your feet really fit perfectly on your head. And then gently release down to the ground. Wiggle your hips side to side. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders, push your hips back to your heels, cross your ankles, roll over your crossed ankles, stretching your legs out in front of you, and then bend your left knee so you bring your, sorry, bend your right knee so you bring your right heel to your left buttocks, and you're stepping in front of your right knee with your left foot. We're coming into a seated twist. So, Often we confuse this and really yank our foot all the way back. And this is available if you're very bendy and open. But if you are not so bendy and open yet, um, you wanna be able to have the whole bottom of your left foot on the ground and both of your sit bones. And then raise your right arm up, stretch it tall, let your whole being lift with it. So you're not like being obedience, raising your hand, you're lifting yourself up and then twist away from your right arm, hooking your right elbow outside your left knee. So switch your arms, Florian, and come into the twist. So twist to your left. Yeah, get now. Inhale, get tall. Really imagine you get tall and you, you're, you're bringing light out through the crown of your head. I mean, literally like you're lighting up your crown. So lift your chin a little bit away from your chest. And then release. Now, just for fun, we practiced in the beginning of class a headstand. If you want, you can bring your hands onto the ground in front of you and then bring the crown of your head onto the ground and then lift up your legs. and switch your legs, twist them, and come back down. <laughs> or just switch your legs. Yes. Now find the setup. So you want your right foot in front of your left knee, stretch your left arm up, feel your whole body lifted with it. And with your exhale, twist away from your left arm, bring your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Inhale, feel the length and height in your torso and exhale, twist. That's a nice variation. And then unwind and recline. Your Shavasana should feel so good. So find your way onto your back. Notice maybe the little dance of fire still in your body. Feel the ground hold you, support you. We're in this together. You, me, and the earth. Do you want a blanket on your feet, Frida? Okay.
With your next inhale, invite your breath to the edges of your body. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And then with your next inhale, stretch your arms up over your head. Feel your body get long. And then with your exhale, curl into a ball and roll onto your side, hugging your knees to your chest. And then help yourself up into a comfortable seated position. Allow your hands to meet at heart center. Close your eyes, root down to rise up and just think of the people we're together with in this moment. Let's close with one ohm. Empty your breath first. Take a deep inhale. Ah. Bring your prayer hands to your third eye, invite the divine light, and as we bow forward together we say, Namaste. And so much love. Woo -woo -woo -woo.